this is a presentation of our initial exploration of the Stronger Memory Program. I would like to um, begin by introducing our team and I will go ahead and introduce myself. So I am Kathy Tompkins. I am a professor and the Associate Dean of Faculty Affairs in our College of Health and Human Services at George Mason University. Next, I would like to introduce Rob Liebrick. Thank you, Kathy. My name is Rob Liebrick. I serve as president and CEO of Goodwin House, which is a faith-based not-for-profit that serves over 2,200 older adults in Northern Virginia. And next, Jessica Fredrickson. Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica Fredrickson, a brain health program manager here at Goodwin House. I do a lot with our Stronger Memory program, as well as our other brain health programming um, for the individuals that we serve. Great, thank you, Jessica. And then Emily Ihara. Hello, my name is Emily Ihara. I am the chair of the Department of Social Work at George Mason University and um, also an associate professor. Thank you. So as Kathy mentioned, um, this presentation is uh, was first presented at the Gerontological Society of America meeting in November of 2021. Um, and the title of our presentation is the Stronger, Pre Stronger Memory Program, a Brain Health Intervention for Individuals with Mild Cognitive Impairment. Um, next slide. So just a little bit about um, what the program is about. Um, it is a brain health intervention targeting older adults with mild cognitive impairment. Um, so in general, about 20% of individuals over the age of 65 have mild cognitive impairment. Um, and this is a condition that um, increases with age. So 38% potentially will develop dementia after five years of mild cognitive impairment onset. During this pre presentation, we'll um, discuss how we developed the Stronger Memory Program, um, the partnership that uh, Goodwin House and George Mason University have, um, the research, uh, the methodology and the results and the implications, and then uh, more about our next steps with continuing the program and furthering the research. Thank you, Emily. As this has mor uh, morphed into a study, uh, which is great with George Mason University. Uh, this started with my mom and a very personal journey. So this is my mom, uh, Wendy Liebrick, and she uh, presents in all the right ways in terms of living a good life. Uh, she's very physically active, has a good social network, um, lovely person with a lovely family, uh, celebrating 54 years of marriage uh, coming up very soon. Unfortunately, in 2011, uh, my mom started to present with a number of changes. Uh, she was repeating herself, forgetting her conversations, and probably most scary of all, uh, she was getting lost in familiar places as she was driving. This certainly was scary for my mom, uh, but also scary for my father. And he was getting really concerned about where she was going with her losses of memory. And this is a timeline uh, that we've been on as a family. Uh, so in that year, uh, my mom took uh, some tests uh, confirmed that she had some brain function challenges. And uh, at the time, I was in service to older adults for nine years and had no solutions for her because there are no cures for dementia. However, in 2012, I attended a leading age conference about a program that could help stabilize uh, one's brain health, which was really exciting. They were talking about this from a functional standpoint within a nursing home. And in 2012, I uh, talked to my mom later about doing something similar, uh, trying to find out a way to engage in the same actions and not knowing exactly what the program was like, but taking the same essence of the program. And the essence of the program were three parts, reading out loud, doing uh, handwriting and quick math. Uh, so not worried about getting the answers right, uh, but just going through the exercise of sort of first grade, second grade math level uh, opportunities. Within about a month of my mom taking on that program, uh, she started to see a reversal of what we had noticed before. So she was no longer repeating herself. Uh, she was no longer forgetting things and was no longer getting lost in familiar places, all really positive things. 
And before that, we had ruled out any other medical circumstances or conditions. Uh, so we knew that this was the only variable, variable of change that was making the difference. In 2015, I was encouraged by a colleague, Judy Wadsworth, uh, to create a program for others. So we had seen some really good success with my mom, but what about other people? At the time I was serving in Seattle, working with an assisted living and memory care population of about 104 uh, apartments worth of residents and ages on Madison in Seattle, and uh, spent about a year creating a curriculum with a uh, occupational therapist slash teacher, uh, working on all the details of what would eventually become a curriculum that has morphed into the Stronger Memory Curriculum. Uh, in 2019, we started to realize the need to have a curriculum that everyone could use and be free to all. Uh, and that's what sparked Stronger Memory in, uh, in particular. And in 2020, we started to do sessions, pilot sessions with our residents at Goodwin House Alexandria and Goodwin House Baelish Crossroads, representing about 950 residents in total. And we took a pilot group of about 25 uh, to start off and see if the program we had created would make a difference in their lives. And then we were grateful for the collaboration with George Mason starting in 2021. In the first uh, study uh, re results, a uh, review of that initial report, which, which have been very positive, and certainly the presentation at the Gerontological Society of America. Similarly, we also launched a Village to Village Network a program. That's a group that represents 50,000 older adults throughout the country and 350 different village groups uh, that are throughout the nation. Uh, today, we are supporting uh, just about 50 of those uh, organizations throughout the country and they're actively participating in Stronger Memory programs. And then in January, uh, we're really excited for this, that the state of, Mar of Maryland has allowed us to roll out uh, this program uh, statewide to all the senior centers within the state. Uh, so currently uh, we're working on that effort. And uh, in mid-January, we expect the first actions uh, for that to be taking hold. So really excited to be able to provide this to as many people as possible uh, in a free way. Okay, so I'm going to um, talk a little bit more about the research piece of Stronger Memory. And also, um, I get the pleasure of talking to you about some of our preliminary results. So this initial exploration is based on 21 Stronger Memory participants and then three family caregivers. So we did interviews with 21 Stronger Memory participants and three of their family caregivers. And our team at Mason includes faculty and students. So we had um, a great group of students helping us with these interviews as well. So participants are told that they do um, need to participate in the, um, or participants are told that they don't have to participate in the research project. So that's important. So they don't um, have to work with us once they enroll in the Stronger Memory Program but many folks are curious about the impact and the outcome of the program. So they do choose to um, spend some time with our team um, at Mason. So one caregiver was the primary respondent in our um, work and then two others um, participated with the family members offering feedback at various points during the interview. So again, primarily our um, work was with the Stronger Memory participants, and then just a few of the caregivers supported the participants as well. So the overall goal of the Stronger Memory program is to have as many participants as possible access the exercises and to check in weekly for the few, first few months of utilizing the program. So there's um, weekly check-ins for all uh, the participants initially, and then they um, certainly are encouraged to continue working on the stronger memory exercises. So ultimately there's no end to the program, but we have set a time limit. So it's about um, eight weeks, 11 weeks or so, um, somewhere in there where we jump in and do some interviewing um, with the participants. So for this particular um, preliminary project, um, after the participants um, were enrolled in the program for a certain period of time, if I recall, it was about eight weeks, then we asked them some questions about their overall experience and reactions to the program. Next slide, please. Okay, so the, again, the current research, any research we do at Mason 
needs the approval of our institutional review board. So this project um, definitely had that approval. Um, each participant gave their verbal consent. So we did these interviews over Zoom. So we were, um, we were able to get a verbal consent from the participants. We did not formally um, collect any um, demographic information. So any information about you know, age, education level, those kinds of variables or those kinds of questions. Um, but some respondents actually offered that um, to us as part of the interview process. So we conducted a semi-structured interview um, with each participant and the interviews took about um, 15 to 30 minutes to complete. And then after we, we were done with all the interviews, we coded um, each one. So each interview was coded by at least two members of our Mason gerontology team. So most often it was a faculty member and a student who coded um, each and every interview. And then from those codes, we came up with some general themes that were occurring um, as people were talking to us. And that's what I'm going to present now are some of the themes that came from each of the questions. Next slide, please. Okay, so the, we had some questions um, around motivation. So, so we asked like, why did you choose to participate in the Stronger Memory Program? What did you hope to gain from your participation? And then we also asked questions around perceptions and reactions to the exercises. So what was the experience of doing the exercises like? So participants were very forthcoming about um, how they liked doing the exercises, some strengths and challenges um, that they had. And then what routine, what routine did they have for doing the exercises? So for example, did they do them um, first thing in the morning? Did they split up the exercises and do some in the morning, some in the afternoon, some in the evening? So we were curious about what that routine looked like. And again, some challenges and lessons learned. And then we just asked them to reflect back on the program. So did they notice, for example, any changes that occurred in their simulation and their attention as they were working on the Stronger Memory Program? So from when they finished to when they began the program, did they notice any um, changes in cognition and simulation and motivation just generally? Um, will they continue the program? And then would they recommend the Stronger Memory Program to a friend? Next slide. Okay, so I am going to briefly go um, through each of these um, questions and the themes related to the questions. Um, but in the interest of time, I will go relatively quickly, but just so everybody knows this report is accessible on um, the Stronger Memory website. So you can you know, read more about these details there. But when we look at motivation and, and through our coding and then the generation of the themes, um, here are a few that we came up with, the few that um, stood out most relative to motivation. So it was fearing was the first one. So fearing memory loss because of experiences of family members and friends or because of a proven family history of cognitive decline and dementia. These were common responses and right understandably so with um, the media and other portrayals of, of people as they age, oftentimes folks fear that, that memory loss, dementia occurs, is gonna happen to everybody. It's gonna happen to um, all of them. So the fear often generates some interest in doing some of these um, brain health, if you will, exercises that may help stimulate and, um, and really increase brain activity. So the next one was witnessing a, witnessing a family member or friend challenge with behaviors and emotions associated with dementia. So correlated with fear, right? So oftentimes um, I was just mentioning that sometimes fear comes from what folks are seeing in the media and social media and on TV shows, um, but also from their own personal experiences with family members or friends. And then this next theme of self-perception, when we were asking about why they chose to participate in the Stronger Memory Program, self-perception that they were becoming increasingly forgetful, whether due to normal aging or another reason. So here are a couple of quotes that help 
exemplify these themes. So the first one, my father had the same issue. I'm doing pretty well now, but that's the reason I wanna to stick to, with the program. I do have friends that do have dementia and Alzheimer's and everything, and it's very scary. Scary to see them deteriorate like they did in any way, so I don't want that to happen to me. Next slide, please. Okay, and here's one um, last quote from um, the question around motivation. It's best to start now before it gets worse. Dementia does run in my family, so it is definitely a fear. Challenge to understand why my brain power is not the same. So other respondents perceive that being cognitively fit is just as important as being physically fit, right? To prevent cognitive impairment. So that's so that's such an interesting perception. So as some of us, um, you know, worry daily about getting our steps in or getting to the gym. Um, at the same time, there's some concern about how do we keep our minds active as well. So it was rare that a respondent did not mention that a motivating factor was hearing from Rob and his mom about their experiences and listening to the impact of the Stronger Memory Program experienced by Rob's mom and our family. So I also want to enter, um, just kind of emphasize the importance of that. So hearing live, right? Hearing from somebody who experience some of the issues that either the participants were starting to experience themselves or were fearful about experiencing, hearing from Rob's mom about her feeling that same way or ha her having those same experiences and then what the Stronger Memory Program did with her in, um, in terms of the changes, in terms of her attitude and enthusiasm for the program was really impactful. So that's an important piece, I think, there. And then this is a significant indicator of the importance of being able to relate, right? So just what I was saying, the importance of being able to relate to someone who has similar characteristics. So it's not a fictional character on TV, it's a Rob mom who's talking to these folks about her perception. So there, Experiences might not be identical to hers once they, um, you know, keep doing the program or complete the program, but that listening to her experience motivated folks to um, to do the program and really created this enthusiasm and interest around the program. So that was very exciting. So again, a, a quote here from Rob. So Rob told us about it, and of course. So this is, I'm sorry, a quote from a participant about um, the experience with Rob and his mom. So Rob told us about it. And of course, his mother is so inspiring. I don't know if any of us would have done it without his mother. So that's really impactful there. Next slide. Okay, so around perception, more around perceptions and reactions. So questioning whether or not the activities would make a difference was common, right? So this was common initially for many of the participants. After a short period of time participating in the program, questioning the impact was less of an issue because they were experiencing that impact themselves. So many participants enjoyed the exercises. In addition, tweaking the exercises to keep their interest, redoing the exercises once they completed them and often adding similar exercises such as crossword puzzles and others were fairly common, right? And, and certainly, certainly appropriate for the program. So you can certainly tweak some things to keep your interest um, in stronger memory. So, so a few quotes here. I did not find the math problem very stimulating. They talked about timing yourself on it. They also, they are so simple that it was just a matter of how fast I could put the numbers in there. Like a lot of us, math isn't necessarily our strongest point but I appreciate it, the activity and being able to do it, but not on a regular basis, I'm sorry. So, so this particular person, participant wasn't a big fan of the math, but um, certainly can spend more time doing some of the other exercises if that's the preference. Next slide, please. So the writing, so another piece, so there's math and then this next piece, so um, it's talked about here, the writing prompts or the writing suggestions include prompts such as, what do you like to do for fun? So that might be one prompt that participants are um, encouraged to write about. And another one, what is the most unusual thing you have ever done? So completing the writing suggestions have turned into daily journaling for many participants, right? So early childhood memories 
have been awakened and I love writing, so that's not a problem. Although I do make my own questions up sometimes, again, that's okay. And then deterring from prompts, writing about the virus. So again, we did these interviews at the height of the coronavirus. So many folks were journaling about their experiences during the virus. The participants are instructed to read aloud for at least three minutes. So that's the third part of the Stronger Memory Program. I'm sorry, for at least 10 minutes per day to themselves or to someone in their family or friend networks. Most respondents enjoyed reading aloud and aloud and commented on the cognitive benefits as well as the benefits of using your voice more for those who live alone. So one quote here, I've decided I'm going to read out loud for the rest of my life. And then another one, I live alone. I don't have anybody to talk to with reading out loud. And I've tried it. I probably will try some more and see if it's beneficial. Next slide. Okay, and then, um, like I had said earlier, we did ask them to talk to us about their routine. Like, what routine did they set up for themselves when doing the Stronger Memory Program? So, when describing their cognitive exercise routine, most respondents preferred structuring their time for the Stronger Memory Program. So, having a certain point in time. Um, during the day or during the week that they um, did the Stronger Memory Program. So being consistent with doing the exercises regularly also had value for some of the participants. So a couple of quotes here. Sporadic, no particular time of day to complete the exercises. Looking back, it would have worked better for me if I carved, carved out 20 to 30 minutes each day. And usually right before dinner, that's when this participant um, usually did the Stronger Memory Program. We're pretty rigid. He's pretty much of a stickler for getting this done. Next slide. And then some of the challenges and lessons learned. So the responses recorded very few challenges with the Stronger Memory Program. Finding the time to complete the program during the holidays was a common response, as well as understanding whether or not there could be flexibility in the program. So a few quotes here. Well, I learned that what is important is what you are doing, not the order you are do the order, I'm sorry, not the order you are doing it in. It is important to do math, reading, and writing, but I don't have to keep it in that same order. It's using your mind in different ways. And so I think what I learned is I need to make sure that I do more of that on a regular basis, that I try to do different things which require my attention and some use of my intelligence. Read out loud with a friend in the program. Started off doing it in the morning, then I did it whenever I could. Next slide. Okay, so then again, like I was saying before, we asked participants um, at, for our last question to really think back and reflect on their cognition and stimulation and, and attention prior to starting the program and then once the program was complete. So participants are eager to continue the program. So again, we had this certain period of time. Um, for some, we did for eight weeks, for some longer, but whatever the period of time was, we also we encouraged people to continue the Stronger Memory Program after our research piece. So our research piece was for a particular um, period of time, but the Stronger Memory Program really never needs to end for participants. So again, we found that participants generally were eager to continue the program and some are interested in the next steps, right? So some participants have begun infusing what they have learned from the Strong and Memory Program into their daily lives. Some have started from the beginning and are redoing the packets. Some feedback was provided on the weekly check-in sessions. Those individuals interested in socializing more seem to enjoy the weekly check-in. So we've heard that a lot that those weekly check-ins were really stimulating and enjoyable for some folks. So some um, participants commented that they would like to have more guest lectures so that they could continue learning. So again, a few quotes, but if you want my opinion, I think it's a fabulous program. And when I do it regularly, I do notice a difference. And you know, expand on it when you can with other things, complement the program with puzzles or whatever and see where it lands you. It's certainly enjoyable for me. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn it back over to Jessica. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, so I just wanna share some stories of success and feedback on what I've heard from our participants. 
Um, I have the, the privilege and joy of working directly with a lot of our Stronger Memory participants on a, on a weekly basis or daily basis even. So one particular participant, Cliff, um, he started doing Stronger Memory um, with his wife. And his wife is a huge support helping uh, encourage him and they are really diligent about doing Stronger Memory every day. Uh, they take Sundays off but all the other days of the week, they make sure that they get their stronger memory in. And uh, after about uh, a month of doing stronger memory, Cliff, who when he started out was only able to write a sentence or two, um, not, not able to, to really write a lot or tell a story. Uh, after about a month, Cliff was writing a full page. And three months into the program, Cliff writes an entire page, sometimes and then some, and he's sharing stories from his past with his wife. Uh, a lot of the prompts in the workbook have really sparked memories from um, his earlier life uh, before they were married. So she's learning new things about him. Um, they're getting closer and enjoying that connection. And uh, it was really exciting one day he came on uh, our weekly call and said, uh, I made my, my famous homemade salad dressing again. And Cliff and his wife, they were so proud. He had just gone into the kitchen, gotten his recipe out and gathered everything together uh, to, to make his recipe independently. And, you know, that seems simple, but for someone with uh, some mild cognitive impairment, following those processes, that confidence to do that and, and stay focused on all the steps can be really challenging. So this was a huge win uh, and point of pride for Cliff. And they've really seen stronger memory make such a difference uh, in his life. Some additional uh, quotes about stronger memory. This first quote is actually from Wendy, the inspiration behind it all. And she's shared that she really feels more capable than she did before being diagnosed with mild cognitive impairment or MCI. So Wendy's been doing this program since, uh, you know, she decided to, to give it a try uh, with Rob back in 2012. And she's a part of Stronger Memory and those weekly check-in groups now and sees that added benefit of having, having individuals to connect with about this brain health program. Um, and she's still, still noticing a difference and improving her ability to focus, to learn new things. And it's really exciting. Another win, one participant, Ruth, shared that she can not only remember her neighbor's name when she goes on a walk, but she remembered his dog's name too. And previously she had been a little bit uh, hesitant to say hello to some of her new neighbors as she was going out on her daily walks because she knew she'd met them before, but she would forget their names. And now she remembers their names, their dogs' names, and she's able to be more outgoing and more social in her community. And another participant said, uh, when the program became available here, I thought it would be worth trying. And over the past several weeks, I think I have noted subjectively a change. It's an outstanding program that I'm happy to be a part of. So it's really exciting to work with these participants in the program and see the difference that it makes uh, in their lives, in their confidence, their memory, their focus. Uh, everyone who gives it a try and finds a way to fit it into their, their daily, weekly routine um, really has a lot of positive things to say. Thank you, Jessica. So uh, we're just to sum up, um, you've heard a lot of various um, results from our exploratory study um, and some quotes from our participants that really indicate their overall satisfaction with the Stronger Memory Program and how they've been um, infusing what they've, they're learning into other aspects of their lives. So for example, comments like, I enjoy book club more or that perception of being less foggy and able to remember differently before um, from when they first started the program. These are important things to, um, uh, to learn about. 
And um, so, so our conclusion is that the Stronger, Primary, Stronger Memory Program um, provides us all a tool to add to our toolbox um, when we're working with people who are challenged by these changes in cognition. And um, our team at George Mason is examining various non-pharmacological interventions that stimulate memory and improve quality of relationships, situations, and emotions and behaviors. Um, and we look forward to further interactions. Next slide, please. And just a little bit about our next steps. Um, actually, these are some, some of our current steps. So the Mason research team, um, we continue to partner with Rob, Jessica, and others who are part of the brain health team at Goodwin House. Um, and as you heard earlier, Rob said that the Stronger Memory Program has been extended to villages across the country. Um, so we've also extended the research opportunity to those who are participating in Stronger Memory. So we have been conducting um, phase two already, which is pre and post testing during the 12 weeks of participation in the program. Um, and we're looking at its uh, impact on memory functioning and life satisfaction. Um, we're almost at our sample of 100, but we are, well, we're working towards that sample of 100 older adults with mild cognitive impairment um, or mild to moderate dementia. Um, and the participants are, particip are, are engaging in weekly meetings during this programming so they can choose again whether or not they want to participate in the research. It has no bearing on their participation in stronger memory. Um, and um, as Kathy said, we, we do encourage everyone to continue incorporating stronger memory into their daily lives. Thank you all for spending time with us and listening to this presentation. Again, you can see our full report on the website um, and we appreciate your interest. Thanks so much. <laughs>